We're going to turn to the experts now and get a better understanding about this virus. We're joined by Dr. Joseph Fair, a virologist and epidemiologist who tracked viruses like Ebola and SARS. He's also an NBC News science contributor. Dr. Fair, thanks so much for joining us. And let me start off by asking you about that new antibody testing here in New York, a state of over 9 million people. And now these preliminary results saying an estimated 2.7 million New Yorkers have likely had COVID-19. Give me your reaction to that number. Uh, let's also talk about the methodology here and what this could tell us about getting schools and and businesses to reopen. So methodology wise, let's start there. This is a, a rapid test. And so what you do is take a blood droplet and put that down and it gives you a measure of both what you call IgM antibodies, which are antibodies when you develop that you develop just after you're uh, recovering from COVID-19 or any other viral infection. And then it also detects IgG antibodies, which are the protective antibodies that we look for, uh, say, if a person is vaccinated against something. So those develop anywhere from four to six weeks out. This test will tell you both of those. So it'll tell you where you are in the stage of your recovery are you just recovering or you know are you four to six weeks out and you know if if the theory holds true that there will be some lasting immunity after this infection, whether or not you develop those protective antibodies yet through the IgG testing. So my reaction to that number is around 30% of the population. Um, I expect that we'll see by the end of this, you know, an upwards of anywhere from 60 to 80% of the population with a total infection, um, you know, rate for COVID-19. And they were saying, I think it was about 3,000 people were tested in this study. Can, can we trust these numbers that, that it's accurate reflection of the state of New York and potentially a, a much larger population like the United States? No, not really. I mean, there's so many variables that are going to go into this, but first and foremost, we just don't have uniform testing everywhere and available to everyone. And it's by, uh, you know, the robust manufacture and uh, distribution of these tests and making it low cost and very easy for everyone to do, both for the test to tell you if you have it and for the test to tell you if you had it, that we're going to truly kind of get a grasp on what the real numbers are. There's going to be a difference in urban areas versus rural areas, and there's going to be different hotspots at different times. Which with the way that this virus is kind of traveling around the country. Okay, and I think I have about 15 seconds left, but let me see if I can get this in. Uh, the thought of combining the flu season and coronavirus has also thought about a second wave. Uh, talk about the concerns with that and the likelihood we could see that. Well, you know, it's absolutely a likelihood just because, you know, we anticipate a uh, an adverse flu season this fall. And, of course, COVID-19, we expect will still be with us this fall. So, you know, the likelihood of those appearing at the same time is very high. And that brings up further concerns about, you know, strains on our system. But the positive news is there are treatments for flu. By that time, we should have enough ventilators produced, to, you know, to go around the nation. And I think that, you know, by that time, we'll also have the time to produce enough adequate personal protective equipment to predict both against flu as well as COVID-19. Okay, getting some more answers about that. NBC News Science contributor Dr. Joseph Fair, thanks so much for joining us.